Hi, it's Menno, and here's another video about the madness of gender, because it never ends! What's up now? The Gender Mafia are trying to cancel Roisin Murphy, the Irish singer-songwriter who you may know from this song. Or oh, this one. She's been in the business for nearly 30 years, so why are they coming after her now? And why are they saying she's transphobic? Let's take a look. The sinister cancelling of Roisin Murphy. It involves a lot of angry men. This all started on the 23rd of August when people started sharing a post from Roisin's personal Facebook profile that said the following. Please don't call me a turf. Please don't keep using that word against women. I beg you. But puberty blockers are fucked. Absolutely desolate. Big farmer laughing all the way to the bank. Little mixed up kids are vulnerable and need to be protected. That's just true. Okay, quick overview of what puberty blockers are. Puberty blockers is the cutesy name for a class of hardcore drugs called gonadotropic releasing hormone analogues. Ooh. They suppress the production of our sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone, and are used to chemically castrate serial male sex offenders, to treat men with advanced prostate cancer, and to treat women with really bad endometriosis. They're pretty hardcore drugs with some very serious side effects like severe bone loss, joint pain, and depression. So, it's not like we're talking about taking an aspirin. Why are we giving them to kids? They're given for two reasons. One condition it's used for is precocious puberty. This is when puberty kicks in much earlier than usual, which tends to affect girls much more than boys. So you could have a seven-year-old girl who already starts developing breasts and who might start menstruating before she's even nine or ten. These drugs can delay that, so she can just be a kid a little bit longer. These drugs are licensed for this, and once they come off them, they'll then go through puberty as normal. So in that case, it's given to kids with a physical condition. In the other case, and that's the one that Roisin was talking about, it's given to kids with psychological issues because they think they're born in the wrong body. Some people feel they've been born in the wrong body. Which is impossible. You are your body. Your body is you. So if you feel like you're a boy but you're trapped in the girl's body, then you're a boy. And like if you feel like a girl, you're trapped in a boy's body, you are a, a girl. This is nonsense, but it's what these kids are being told. And that puberty is somehow the enemy and that they need to go on drugs to fight it. Without getting this medication, I will go through the wrong puberty therefore making permanent changes to me that I do not want. What these kids need is good therapy and to go through puberty because most resolve their issues that way. They literally grow out of it. But since the mid 90s, these type of kids have been experimented on with these hardcore drugs in the name of gender affirming care. And after nearly two decades of that, we now know that between 96 and 98% then go on to the cross-sex hormones and potentially surgeries. By the way, these drugs have never been licensed for this. So, let's compare. If you let them go through puberty, most of these kids will be fine. A small number might look for medical treatment. But if you pull the plug on puberty, virtually all of them will go on to further medical treatment. Pretty clear to see which one is the money maker and which one isn't. And that's exactly what Roisin was pointing out. Big Pharma laughing all the way to the back. <laughs> she was simply standing up for kids so they wouldn't be hurt by bad medicine. And we know it's bad medicine. In 2012, Professor Russell Viner, a hormone specialist at the Tavistock JITS, stated, we are dealing with the unknown. And since, even though there have been systemic evidence reviews, a study by the Tavistock and we've had the CAS review, no one has found any evidence to suggest that puberty blockers even work to reduce so-called gender dysphoria. On the contrary, the Health Research Authority raised concerns that these blockers may instead lock these kids into their distress. It reminds me of that song by Pink. Instead of 
So, when Roshane says, Puberty blockers are fucked. She's right. And this is being recognized by more and more countries. The UK, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, France, New Zealand. And I may have missed some. All these countries have now either seriously restricted their use, revised their guidance, or urged caution. So if Roisin is right, why are people so upset? And why are they going after her? Okay, time to look at the backlash. Was it something I said? The backlash. Check out some of these reactions. Ignorant. Shocking. She's a turf. I'm so disappointed. What the actual fuck? Transphobe. And from our Spanish friends. Roisin Murphy siendo turf. Roisin being a turf. Me ha partido el corazón. Has broken my heart. And just like that, they were ready to dump her. To get rid of her music, cancel pre-orders for her new album, and rip up tickets to her upcoming shows. Here is Nathan who is brave enough to share with us his lived experience of making such a deeply traumatic sacrifice. Very painfully and solemnly removing any Roisin Murphy from my DJ sets as another transphobic bigot outs themselves. As silly and pathetic as I think these people are, Roisin obviously took it to heart and within a week had issued an apology. But by that time, it was already too late. Her record label decided to stop promoting her new album. Two London shows were cancelled, and so were all press engagements. And just to stick the knife in a little bit more, her label has now said that they will donate new album proceeds to transgender charities. So they'd be using the success of her work to potentially fund the very thing that she wants to protect children from. Josie received the blockers as an implant in her arm. It's okay if you cry. Josie held on tight. <laughs> that was an 11 year old boy who over a decade ago was robbed of the chance to simply grow into himself and find happiness as a guy. It's crazy, man. But let's go after a woman who calls it out. Show her that she shouldn't speak out a term. Put her back in her place. And it's not like her apology was appreciated. It made people even more angry. Where is your support for trans people? What a slap in the face. Educate yourself. Own up to what you've done. Apology not accepted. It's just even more drama. Although this one did make me laugh. Roshi will continue to be transphobic in private. Ah. Yeah, imagine that. I'm a private transphobe. Turfing in private, where you can tell me to stop. The whole thing shows, yet again, that you're expected to tell the trans line at all times, even if it flies in the face of common sense, good medical care and child safeguarding, because obviously these things aren't compatible with trans. Here are some words of advice from Kathleen Stock, who knows all about how kind the Be Kind Brigade can be. Please, if you're tempted to weigh in, only do it if you aren't going to apologize. Ever. They won't accept it. You look weak and they'll be emboldened to intimidate others in the future. Now I don't take issue with Roisin apologizing. I can only imagine how she must have felt when it all kicked off. But I do take issue with the guys who did this. Because it seems to be mainly guys and especially gay and so-called queer guys like Buzz O'Neill Maxwell. Gays, one of you pull Roisin Murphy aside there for a quick chat before this gets out of hand. What, like bring her in for some kind of examination? Send her to a re-education camp? And then there's Joanna Cuddle, who I think is the instigator behind all this. He's the snitch who shared Roisin's personal Facebook post publicly on Twitter and 20 odd tweets laying in on her. He believes that people with magical gender fields are the shamans of our existence. And he's a go-go dancer for an act called The Fuck Pigs. I mean, seriously? This is the guy that thinks he can trash her? A fuck pig go-go dancer? Man, it's embarrassing. And what I really, really don't get about these guys is how they can be so ignorant of what's actually happening with these 
blockers. What's actually happening in these gender clinics all over the world. We know that youngsters who are same sex attracted are massively overrepresented at these clinics. How many of those kids in the last 30 years, 30 years would have simply grown up to be lesbian or gay if left alone? How many have we lost? In the name of gender affirming care. It's nothing less than medical gay conversion. And that's what should be canceled. But when I point this out online, these jokers either go block or cool story, bro. It's like clinicians have been saying this for years. The data shows it. And we have the stories of detransitioners confirming it. That's what they should be up in arms about. And this dude thinks he's one of the good guys. <laughs> I mean, honestly. But amidst all the ugliness, something wonderful happened. People came out in droves to support her, including gay men. We're not all blinded by this gender stuff. And I stand with Roshi Murphy, trended for at least two days. Journalist called out what was really going on. And while Nathan is crying in his record collection, an actual DJ came out in support. Her new album is getting four and five star rave reviews. And this whole saga has even helped to peak a few people, including best-selling author John Boyne. So let that be a message to those gender clowns. We're over it. We're done. Cancelling someone is so yesterday. And just today, Roisin posted this on her social media. I, uh, you're right. I, uh... She's just gonna keep going. Let's send her some love, keep up the support, and use all of this to peak more people. In other words, let's make this moment less. And finally, a message to Roisin. This gayer says, thank you for saying that puberty blockers are fucked, because they are. And thank you for watching. Ciao. Well, if you've come this far, please consider supporting me on Patreon or via PayPal so I can make more of these videos. And thank you so much to everybody who already does this. It's fantastic. It means the world. Thank you so much. Special thanks to my sugar daddies and fairy godmothers and a big, massive thank you to all my big spenders. Help her open, Mama Turf and the Turventines, the lovely Mary, me Julie, Julia, Lindy Lou from Down Under, Dusty and Esther. Thank you. Bring it back, sing it back, bring it back, sing it back to me.